What's up, everybody? It's Man of Low Moral Fiber here. My name's Luke, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Actualizer as a part of my Does It Suck series. This weapon is a Serif Rarity Hyperion SMG that comes from the first campaign DLC. This weapon is quite similar to the bitch in construction and stats. If we look at it here on the card, we can see that the Actualizer has a higher damage in trade for a lower accuracy, reload speed, and magazine size. Now, accuracy isn't that big a deal because they are both Hyperion weapons, and so sustained fire will increase their accuracy. However, the bitch gets accurate a lot quicker than the Actualizer does. If I fire the Actualizer here, you can see that it takes a you know good few shots before we uh, get a concise grouping like that. And if we switch on over to the bitch, you can see that it gets there extremely quickly. The bitch is laser accurate whereas the actualizer is not and that is one of the main differences between the weapons the actualizer has a lot more initial sway as well beyond that you'll notice that the actualizer does not say on the card that it carries a heavily increased critical hit damage the big difference also is the reload speed which is twice as long on the actualizer the magazine size is slightly higher on the bitch but that is rather negligible so we'll get started here in the uh, Washburn Refinery, and we will determine whether or not we think um, the Actualizer sucks, and determine how we think it compares to the bitch. So, let's go ahead and uh, get this guy up in the air. And you can see that, uh, especially when you manage to snag a critical hit or two, that this weapon is going to be quite powerful. So let's group both of the, or all three of these guys, rather, and hopefully uh, get them slagged with scorn there. So obviously, um, it, it does take a few more shots to get trained in, but this weapon still has an extremely deep magazine, especially if you are uh, boosting foresight like I am. And, uh, you know, that's good. Cloudkill took that guy out for us, which was, <laughs> you know, a couple months ago that would have been a stunning development for me, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, so it has a deep enough magazine size that you're not really... Too awful concerned with uh, the fact that it takes a few seconds to train in your shots. So long as you have, you know, something that is fairly easy to hit, uh, you should be able to cruise through pretty quickly. Let's try to find enemies that are up here and uh, get them slagged and killed. Cool. So as you can see, the actualizer, you know, and it's a little early to call since that's just one room, but. I think it's pretty easy to see that the actualizer doesn't suck. Which brings up the question, would you use it over the bitch? And I'm a little bit undecided on that right now. Probably I would not. Um, I, I say that, and then that happens. I don't know. It really kind of come down comes down to a matter of preference. If you're using the Catcom on Maya and you have a somewhat appropriate build, you really can't go wrong with either. And it comes down to whether or not you want quicker and more accurate burst, perhaps, or ones that deal a little bit more damage. And it's it's hard to argue against either. I don't know. Um, the Actualizer isn't a weapon that I've used often. The bitch is tried and true for me. Um, but the Actualizer, it, it's pretty damn good. Uh, it rips through enemies, you know. And... I'm not entirely certain whether it does or does not get the huge critical hit damage boost that the bitch is getting. I guess that would be something that, in a more thorough video, I should have tested, but, eh. Regardless, this weapon is tearing up enemies pretty damn quickly. I kind of like the actualizer. The initial inaccuracy really does turn me away from it. That is one of the things that kind of drew me to the bitch. Um, was the fact that it was so accurate as an SMG that makes it, you know, relatively unique. Whereas this is kind of your standard Hyperion weapon um, in a lot of ways, just with huge damage. And so I wouldn't say this weapon's necessarily inaccurate, or that it's going to waste a ton of ammo. Geez, Cloud Kill plus uh, Pimpernel is a little bit ridiculous. Um, but I don't know. It rips up these enemies pretty quick. It's damn good. I was looking for a critical hit, but obviously didn't need one. 
And definitely, if you're not getting critical hits, this weapon is going to be better than the bitch. So, that's pretty interesting. Let's get this dude up in the air and uh, get rid of him as well. That scorn ball should not only blow up a few of these enemies, or slag a few of these enemies, it should also blow up a few of our barrels. It's one of the cool things about scorn, and, uh, you know, it's something that I need to utilize, especially if I'm going to be using Blight Phoenix. Which I'm using not only because it's somewhat useful for life tap, but also mainly because um, it looks cool. And granted, you can't see that unless you enable third person mode through Cheat Engine or some, uh, you know, other sort of program like that and eh if I was playing co-op people would see it but then if I was playing co-op I'd be playing zero I don't play support roles okay we're doing well I would say that chain reaction is perhaps a little bit more potent with the actualizer than the bitch on Maya because um, you know chain reaction hits are much less likely to be critical hits than uh, your standard shot would be and for that it's easy to see why base damage would be favored uh, as opposed to accuracy or um, critical hit damage that the bitch might have over the actualizer so I guess that's worth keeping in mind this weapon though you you, you can't go wrong with either uh, configuration of it they're kind of two feathers from the same bird if you will the bitch and the actualizer have a lot in common and like I said, it really comes down to personal preference in my mind, which you choose um, if you're going to use one of them and, you know, you have access to both of them. It Personal preference is the main thing. I mean, I can, I can definitely see a benefit to both. I don't think you can necessarily go wrong with either. They are both very powerful weapons. Getting better with that scorn shit. Ooh. All right, so it looks like we're pretty much out of here. We just need to kill this guy, and then we'll work our way through the rest of the uh, area as well. Why not? We did so with the bitch. So, yeah. <laughs> the answer to does it suck regarding the actualizer. A resounding no. This weapon is pretty damn good. Obviously, I already killed the hot water in here, so we can just move on. Um... It's just another, you know, great gun from the first campaign DLC. The first campaign DLC provides a suite of awesome weapons, and that is one of the reasons why it is my favorite. Perhaps I have a personal bias, uh, being a zero player primarily, because I wouldn't say uh, two weapons that are required for zero, um, specifically melee zero, come from that DLC. But two weapons that greatly benefit Melee Zero and Zeros just at all come from that DLC, the Rapier and the Pimpernel, which are undeniably two of Zero's best options. So that is perhaps one of the reasons why that DLC holds a soft spot in my particular heart. But, um, you know, <laughs> it provides a lot of other good gear as well, including some great SMGs. This, the Tattler, the Sandhawk are all really good SMGs. And, um, you know, top tier SMGs in the game. So, that's worth keeping in mind. When evaluating a DLC, the most important thing to me in a DLC is, you know, not only how the DLC plays, the gameplay of the DLC is really important. I think the Pirate DLC excels at that. But the loot that the DLC provides, how it benefits the game as a whole, you know, because um, you're not going to spend all your time in a DLC. But the gear gained from a DLC can objectively make it more fun for certain other parts of the game. So that's really why I truly enjoy the pirate DLC. It's weird how Scorn doesn't aggro enemies. It seems loud and large to not do so. But whatever. We'll get up here and uh, finish this guy off before... Phase lock ends, and that's the end of the Washburn Refinery. I have to say, the actualizer is actually 
you know, better than I thought it would be. I thought that the bitch would be objectively superior to the actualizer, but I can't really say that it is due to the fact that the actualizer is basically the same thing in different wrapping paper. Um, it accomplishes the same goal. Really, both are very, very solid weapons, and I wouldn't recommend one over the other. Um, I would leave it up to the player's personal preference. If I was to choose personally, eh, I might go with the actualizer right now just because it's newer and uh, fresher to me. I've played more with the bitch, and I don't really see an overwhelming benefit to using either. I think they are very, very comparable. So, as always, guys, I do thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. If you haven't yet taken the time to subscribe, please do so. I'd appreciate that as well. Otherwise, I do hope to catch you next time. Bye, guys.